What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Wednesday, July 17th, 2024, and I have some breaking news to share with you guys. Right now, it is 1532 Eastern Time here in the United States, and we have some major updates with the situation with Donald Trump. So I want to share that with you, and also we have some major breaking news coming in from Russia and Asia. Right now we have U.S. nuclear forces on high alert another afternoon. Here we have three Boeing E-6B Mercury nuclear war command and control planes up in the air. This afternoon we have one off the coast of North Carolina. We have two over Oklahoma right now. So this is a lot of nuclear war command and control planes, and these planes are responsible for remotely launching all of our Minuteman 3 ICBMs, and they can also communicate with our submerged nuclear-armed submarines and send them nuclear attack options and nuclear launch codes. And we currently have some unusual sub-hunter activity off the coast of Florida, we have one P-8 Poseidon that just turned off its transponder east of Port St. Lucie. It took off from Jacksonville, and it disappeared in between the Bahamas and Florida. And these P-8 Poseidons have been flying in this area a lot over the last week or so. And this is the same area where the Russian subs went through on their way to Cuba and then we also have a U.S. Navy reconnaissance drone that took off from Jacksonville and went east out into the Atlantic, and it disappeared probably about 100 or 200 miles offshore. And then we also had this aerial refueler doing numerous loops off the coast of Charleston and Savannah, so something's going on. And then we also had another P-8 Poseidon go down to the Bahamas earlier, and then it came back up from the Bahamas. And then we also had another MQ-4C Triton U.S. Navy reconnaissance drone head east out into the Atlantic. So a lot of activity here off the U.S. southeast coast with sub-hunters, refuelers, and reconnaissance drones. So something's going on over here. And here we have a video that was sent to me by a source that I have who lives right next to Offutt Air Base where these nuclear war command and control planes take off from. And this is one of the nuclear war command and control planes that's up in the air right now this afternoon. It took off from Offutt Air Base and he was able to grab this short video for us. So awesome footage here. What's interesting about these planes is that they're purely white, okay? So that's how you can tell they're a nuclear war command and control plane because they're just pure white. And here we have some new footage coming out from the Trump rally Saturday. And it shows Secret Service and police of some kind struggling to reach the shooter. They were struggling to get through this fence that separated the farm show complex from the next door business that the shooter took his shots from. So let me just play this for you. This is absolutely insane. So first they tried to ram the gate, and I guess it didn't work. And the guys with the gray uniforms are Pennsylvania State Police, and then the guys with the black uniforms are the Secret Service Police. So these guys right here are part of the Secret Service Uniformed Division, and those guys with the uh, gray uniforms look like... 
Pennsylvania State Police. So here you can see them up on the roof already, the roof of this business right next to the farm show complex. And I'm going to try to get down there sometime in the next few days and do an on the ground investigation because it's not super far away from me. So I'm going to try to do that for you guys. I'm going to see if I can go live from this location. From what I hear, there's still a lot of feds over there. Everything is still closed off for the most part and security is tight so i'm gonna wait a little bit for things to cool off before i go down there so these guys with the hats are pennsylvania state police So just absolutely insane. Um, not sure what to make of this. There's a lot of weird things about this situation. And I did do some detailed analysis in my last live stream Monday night. We looked at Google Street View and we were able to analyze the crime scene here. And there's some people saying now that there was another shooter on the water tower and I'm not sure if I believe that simply because the water tower has barbed wire fence all around it. And for a shooter to get into that water tower, it would have had to been an inside job because getting through that fencing and then climbing all the way up to the water tower, they would have been spotted, you would think. But um, this reeks of an inside job, to be honest with you guys. I mean, for all this to happen and for it to take so long for the police to respond... And for nobody to know that he was up there, like I've said many times, it's very, very unusual considering how close he was to Trump. And also, why did they put Trump out in the open like that in the worst possible location? The farm show grounds are quite large, and they decided to put Trump like right on the edge of the farm show grounds. And basically, Trump was right next to all these private businesses that the Secret Service did not have under their control. They didn't sweep those buildings. They didn't put people on the roofs. They didn't close down the area. They put Trump in the worst possible location. They could have put him more in the center of the farm show grounds, which the Secret Service had total control over, okay, rather than putting him right on the edge of the farm show grounds, right next to all these private businesses where somebody could hide out in, and that's exactly what happened, okay? So... Very strange situation, and apparently the shooter, Thomas Crooks, had a transmitter with him while he was on the roof, and apparently the transmitter was intended to set off explosives, and Trump will be attending the funeral of 50-year-old Corey Comparator, the firefighter who was shot and killed at the Trump rally on Saturday. The funeral will be this week, and it is private. And we also have some footage coming from the RNC last night. Apparently, Rudy Giuliani collapsed while he was walking into the RNC. Check this out. Wow, absolutely insane, guys. Absolutely insane. 
So, very interesting. And apparently the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, suffered a stroke yesterday during the third plenary session of... And this update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply is doing a discount on their one-month emergency food supply. And to get the deal, you got to go to preparewithnyprepper.com. And the link is in the description below this video. This is a one-month freeze-dried food supply. It has a 25-year shelf life. Normal price is $237. They've dropped it down to $177. So that's a savings of $60. And it's all packed within two rugged water-resistant buckets. Free shipping is included. $177 for one month of food. Where are you going to find a deal like that? They also have a general store, and they're always running discounts in their general store on various prepping and survival items. They have everything from MREs, potassium iodide, to survival seeds. And to get to their general store, you got to click on the My Patriot Supply logo at the top of the page when you get to preparewithnyprepper.com. And you'll see when you get there, they have everything you can imagine. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $60 off the My Patriot Supply one month emergency food supply. That's $180 for one month of food, free shipping included. The link is in the description below this video. And also check out their general store. They have everything you can imagine prepping and survival related, and they're always running various discounts there of the Chinese Communist Party. His condition is currently unknown, but here's a picture of him while he suffered his stroke. You can see this grimace he's making here after he drank this cup of coffee, it appears. Maybe it was poisoned, who knows. And power was restored across southern Russia early Wednesday after a malfunction at a major nuclear power plant the day before that led to sweeping power outages and emergency restrictions across the region. A power unit of the Rostov nuclear power plant automatically shut down on Tuesday afternoon due to a false alarm in the turbine generator safety system, according to the state operator Ross Energatom. Ross Energatom said the plant's crew established and promptly resolved the cause of the malfunction later that evening. By Wednesday morning, the 4,000-megawatt nuclear power plant was supplying 2,800 megawatts of electricity from three of its operating units with a fourth unit undergoing planned maintenance that began in June. Russia's energy ministry said in a short statement that it continues to monitor the energy supply situation in regions experiencing abnormally high temperatures. Deputy Energy Minister Yevgeny Grabchak told state media that the authorities may be forced to reintroduce temporary restrictions on power usage if problems persist due to an ongoing heat wave. Temperatures in the Rostov region capital of Rostov-on-Don were forecast to soar as high as 100 degrees Fahrenheit on Wednesday afternoon. Besides the southern Rostov region, Tuesday's outages linked to the Rostov nuclear power plant were reported in the Krasnodar region, the republics of Dagestan and kabardina balkaria and karachievo Cherkassia, as well as in the annexed Crimea. The power system is now at its maximum capacity, Grabchak was quoted as saying by Interfax, for the first time in the energy system's existence, the summer maximum energy consumption exceeded that of winter. Later on Wednesday, the mayor of the southern city of Krasnodar announced power usage restrictions for the next three days to avoid overloading the power grid. So Russia is having some major power issues in the southern part of Russia from the Crimea area all the way to the Caucasus, okay? There were power outages reported all the way in Dagestan, and we know that this power plant, the Rostov nuclear power plant, supplies 75% of electricity to southern Russia, and they had to do an emergency shutdown yesterday of one of their reactors due to an unknown malfunction. So that's the latest information I have on that. Obviously, the Russian military and the Russian government 
is not going to tell the exact truth of what's going on, but they did suffer a malfunction at one of their nuclear power plants in southern Russia, literally right next to Ukraine, the Rostov nuclear power plant, which has four reactors. One of them malfunctioned, two were still working, and one is undergoing planned maintenance. But this could potentially be a Chernobyl situation, guys. We know that Russia has a bad history of managing nuclear power plants, and with this war going on, I'm sure that they're resources for managing their nuclear power plants have diminished because they're putting all their resources into the war okay rather than managing domestic things okay and in south dakota at the ellsworth air force base which happens to be the home of b1 strategic bombers security personnel there will be conducting an exercise starting yesterday and lasting through tomorrow to evaluate the preparedness of the 28th bomb wing to handle various situations during the exercise residents near the installation may hear announcements over the base's public address system sirens simulated gunfire explosions and smoke and emergency response vehicles wow okay so sounds like they're training for a nuclear war situation or maybe some kind of an attack on the base but they're going to be using public address systems sirens simulated gunfire explosions smoke and emergency response vehicles so absolutely crazy guys and russia is now sending t-54s to the front line in ukraine t-54s are from like world war ii so here we have video footage coming from Uzanava train station near Moscow getting ready to go to eastern Ukraine absolutely insane look at this guys Russia is sending World War II era tanks into Ukraine now a lot of people laugh at this and they say oh you know look what Russia is doing but you know Russia is still winning the war even though they're sending all this junky equipment and their soldiers don't have boots and all that they're still winning the war and so I think it's a big problem in the West where people just constantly mock Russia and laugh at Russia, you know, rather than beefing up Ukraine and trying to figure out ways for Ukraine to win. It's almost like, a, you know, a, a temporary high to get away from the reality of the situation to, you know, laugh at Russia uh, rather than focusing on winning the war. They just you know, pick these little clips out and say, oh, look, ha, 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 Russia's sending World War II equipment, but what is that doing? Is that helping Ukraine to win the war? Not really. I mean, it's just like a temporary high, but still it's it's significant that Russia is sending World War II era tanks to the front line. You can see how long this train is full of these tanks. And Russia's state media yesterday showed a simulated nuclear strike on Europe. So let me play this for you. A quick look at the tactical and technical characteristics of the missiles is enough to realize that the United States is throwing Europe into the melting pot of a world war. With guaranteed mutual destruction, in Germany, the Pentagon will deploy missiles that pose a direct threat to Russia, reaching St. Petersburg, Kazan, Moscow. Novosibirsk and Yekaterinburg. We are talking about missiles that fall under the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, which was destroyed by Trump. So he's talking about the Biden administration's plans to deploy the Typhon missile system and the Dark Eagle missile system to Germany. Dark Eagle is a U.S. Army hypersonic missile that can fly at Mach 17 and has a range of over 2,500 miles, I believe. And then the Typhon missile system is a system that can launch either Tomahawk missiles, which are nuclear capable, or SM-6 
ballistic missile interceptors okay these are part of the Aegis system so very serious deployment here Russia is obviously not happy about it Екатеринбурга Речь о ракетах, подпадающих под разрушенный еще Трампом договор ДРСМД, то есть средней и меньшей дальности. Радиус поражения обозначенный. That is medium and shorter range. The radius of destruction indicated in the document is from 500 to 5500 kilometers. It is not difficult to assume the. В документе от 500 до 5500 километров. Несложно предположить географию от Geography of the response in case the short White House press release becomes a reality. All European capitals are at risk if our missiles are in Kaliningrad. Это в случае, если короткий пресс-релиз Белого дома станет... So here they're showing all the European countries and their capitals that could potentially be nuked by Russia. They're showing France, Germany, Hungary, Poland... Реальностью. Под угрозой... Без... They're showing the Baltic countries, Austria, Czech Republic. Из малого все европейские столицы. Если наши ракеты встанут в Калининграде, Берлин, Варшава, все прибалты, Париж, Бух. Berlin, Warsaw, the Baltics, Paris, Bucharest, Prague, and American bases in Germany, Garmisch, Partenkirchen, Patch Barracks, Spengdalum, and Ramstein. Those are all the main bases in uh, Germany that we have. Bucharest. Прага. Конечно, американские базы в Германии. Гармии, Шпартин, Кирхен, Казармы, Патча, Шпангдалем, Рамштайн. Особое внимание Британии. Special attention to Britain, our traditional enemy, as a significant part of the northern fleet will work against her. Washington puts not only London under attack, but... ...не нашему традиционному врагу, так как против нее будет работать значительная часть Северного флота. Под удар Вашингтон ставит не только Лондон, но и Манчестер. Also, Manchester, Birmingham, the largest naval base, Devonport, Clyde in Scotland, where the King stores Trident nuclear missiles, Portsmouth and Chatham. So they're showing a video here of this uh, simulated strike from the Russian Northern Fleet on Great Britain over Scandinavia. Birmingham. Крупнейшую военно-морскую базу Девонпорт, Клайд в Шотландии, где король хранит ядерные ракеты Трайдент, Портсмут и Чатамскую верфь в графстве Кент. Dockyard in Kent, Britain is most vulnerable. All it takes is three missiles, and this civilization will collapse. Британия в самом уязвимом положении. В принципе, достаточно трех ракет, и эта цивилизация. Absolutely crazy, guys. We are literally on the verge of nuclear war. Don't hyper-focus on the Trump situation. Make sure you're continuing to prepare because we have all these war fronts and NATO and Russia are about to go to war and it could happen before Trump gets elected. They may try to keep Trump out of office by kicking off this war before the election and maybe also the bird flu is going to start randomly spreading right before the election. And we also have Asia. We have the Middle East. And the Philippine Navy is studying the possibility of conducting a rotation and reprovision mission to the Second Thomas Shoal with multinational allied countries in the South China Sea. The last time they did one of these missions was in June, and it ended with a confrontation with the Chinese Coast Guard who damaged one of their Zodiacs. So now the Philippine Navy wants allied countries to accompany them on this mission to the second Thomas Shoal, which is part of the Philippines exclusive economic zone. And basically they control that shoal, but China is claiming that it's theirs. And so that's why there's been uh, confrontations over there between the Philippines and China and the US deployed the Typhon missile system to the Philippines so they could strike China if necessary. And now the Philippines wants a multinational coalition of allied countries to join them on this mission to rotate and reprovision uh, their military in that region. Okay, so this could potentially lead to some kind of a situation over there, a potential confrontation. 
And the former Russian president, Dmitry Medvedev, said that the laws of ancient Babylon authorized Russia to start a nuclear war. He said the laws of ancient Babylon and India, as well as the Old Testament and the Quran, give Russia the right to use nuclear weapons against its adversaries in the West. The principle of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth has a historical character. It was outlined already in the Code of Hammurabi, the laws of Manu, the laws of the Twelve Tables, and of course in the Old Testament and the Quran. So one can and sometimes must repay evil with evil, Medvedev said in an interview with Argumente y Facte newspaper. Wow, absolutely crazy. And the Israeli chief of staff of the Israeli army presented the Lebanon invasion plan to U.S. CENTCOM commander Kirilla, according to Khan News. So that's huge, guys. They've already presented their invasion plan to the U.S. military for Lebanon and Hezbollah. So I think the timeline is going to be more like August, possibly September for this uh, invasion. We'll have to wait and see. And a senior Hezbollah official stated that the war is not with Israel. Israel is merely a tool. The primary battle, the real war, is with America. And Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah said yesterday, we say to those who threaten us with war and want us to surrender to the Israeli occupation's aggression and to stop supporting the oppressed in Gaza and who intimidate us with war alongside the enemy, never will we accept humiliation. So strong words there from Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah. And the European Court of Justice ruled that Ursula von der Leyen, the EU Commission president, violated European law by keeping mRNA injection contracts secret. Wow. Apparently her husband is a doctor and there's some conflict of interest because she signed massive contracts with Pfizer and because her husband has connections to Pfizer, basically it was like a kickback almost to her because she signed these big contracts between the EU and Pfizer for all the mRNA vaccines. And essentially her husband would probably get a portion of the uh, contract because of his affiliation with Pfizer. So Bad news there for Ursula von der Leyen. We had massive amounts of reconnaissance around Kaliningrad last night. You can see here an RC-135 rivet joint that flew around Kaliningrad. Then there was also this French Air Force reconnaissance plane that was flying around Kaliningrad. And then we also had a P-8 Poseidon sub-hunter that was flying off the coast of Kaliningrad. So lots of reconnaissance there. Here's the P-8 Poseidon doing numerous loops here off the coast of Kaliningrad. And then we had a Constant Phoenix, which is a nuke sniffer airborne over the planes yesterday in the middle of the night, which is extremely unusual. These planes can detect radiation in the atmosphere. We also had this aerial refueler off the coast of South Carolina, maybe refueling sub-hunting assets there. And then we had a South Korean sub-hunter, a P-8 Poseidon, patrolling South Korea's southern coastline last night. We also had a South Korean Air Force reconnaissance plane flying along the border with North Korea. And then we also had this Taiwan Air Force reconnaissance plane patrolling their coastline, their western coastline. And then we also had this British Eurofighter Typhoon that was flying over Jordan and Israel, and it actually got aerially refueled over the eastern Mediterranean somewhere. We also had a U.S. Navy reconnaissance drone patrolling the coast of Libya. Now, what's interesting is that apparently Russia has deployed caliber missiles here in Libya, and the caliber missiles are able to reach Italy and Spain and various important bases that NATO has around the Mediterranean region and the caliber missiles are nuclear capable so that's probably why the Navy has been sending these recon drones to Libya so much the last two weeks because Russia has placed missiles here so they can hit our primary NATO bases in northern Italy also they can hit uh, Siganella 
Okay, we have two bases in Italy where nuclear warheads are stored as part of the NATO nuclear sharing program, okay? So there's Aviano and then there's Getty Air Base, both in northern Italy, and both of them have the B-61 nuclear gravity bombs there, and now Russia can target them from Libya. So that is absolutely insane. And then there's also the Rota uh, bomber base in Spain where all of our B-52s go. And then, of course, we have uh, Crete and Cyprus, lots of military activity there, and then Sigonella. So Russia is uh, trying to checkmate us. And here we have a picture of Mount Etna, which erupted a few days ago in Sicily. Look at this eruption. Absolutely massive. Absolutely crazy. So volcanic activity still very high around the world. And here we have some video footage coming from the Baltic Sea showing an American F-15 Strike Eagle getting intercepted by a Russian Sukhoi-27. This is over the Baltic Sea somewhere. And the F-15 Strike Eagle's primary mission now is for nuclear weapons delivery. Okay, so this was basically a practice run by the U.S. or NATO forces to uh, deliver B-61s on Russian territory. So let me just play this for you. Basically, the U.S. was trying to see how close they could get to Russian airspace, and they wanted to see the Russian response. But that's the latest breaking news that I have. I will be back later on tonight with more breaking news, so make sure you're subscribed. Hit the bell icon down below so you get notified when I post these updates. And I am going to try to get over to Butler, Pennsylvania to do some on-the-ground reporting and on-the-ground live coverage. I'm going to probably try to go sometime in the next couple of days, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.